Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video we are going to talk about namespaces and scopes and uh, I will be talking about it in Python but this is not only limited to Python it is also available for all different languages. Now if you have heard the word namespace you would have heard it first of all at uh, probably in the C++ language and you might not have an idea that they also exist in Python as well. So they are not a term which is just related to uh, any particular language. So for example, if I just refer to C++, uh, you have seen that we write the word uh, using namespace std, wherein we use the word namespace actually. So uh, what it actually means and how you can uh, use namespaces and scopes to better understand your programs. Let's look at it in this video. So this is also going to be a very basic video for your non CSIT friends as well because they will also get an understanding of what actually the these concepts are and so it's really important as well. So let's get started. Now what are namespaces and what are scopes? Now if we go according to the definition then a namespace is a system to have a unique name for each and every object in Python and scope can be understood as the level of reach of an object within a boundary. So let's look at a basic example. So suppose you want to search for a person X in a school, but there can be an instance that the person for whom you are searching occurs multiple times in your school records. So one thing which you can do is narrow the area where you want to search the person inside the school. So you can say that you want to search the person X in the fifth standard and where you have a limited set of people so you can search for the person better. Now again there can be an instance where the person for whom you are searching for occurs multiple times inside the, of that class. Then in that case you can increase your search filter by saying that I want to search for a person whose name is X and whose surname is Y. So there can be a very rare situation wherein this kind of a situation might happen where the name and the surname for a person becomes same for another person as well. So here your probability of getting a redundant person is really low but you basically get the example what we are talking about that we are trying to narrow the things to make our search easier. In a similar manner scopes and namespaces work wherein if you are talking about a variable, if you are talking about a function, if you are talking about objects which are created from classes then in that case namespace and scopes apply to them as well. And understanding these concepts are necessary to have a deep understanding of what your program is actually doing and how the elements of your program are actually working. So let's look at an example and before looking at an example let's look at a diagram to make you understand better. So namespaces helps us to understand how scope of functions and variables can affect our program and it also helps us to understand that which parts of our program are accessible to us and which are not. So if you look at the figure here we are talking about namespaces first and you can see that there is a superset of built-in namespaces inside of which you have global namespaces and inside of which you have local namespaces. Now what do they mean actually? So if we just look in terms of programming we have a python program and we want to write a program to say uh, swap two numbers and then for swapping two numbers you use a temporary variable inside of your swap function. So what you are actually doing is creating a function and you are writing a main function and the variable temp which belongs to your swapping function is only belonging to it which means that it is only available inside of your function in your local function which you have defined. So if this is clear then the further slides will also be very clear to you. So here is a very simple example on this huge screen. Now we are writing a variable var1 which is equal to 5 and then we are defining a dummy function which has var2 which is equal to 10 and then inside of the dummy function we are defining var3 inside of our dummy function 2 and then finally we are printing var1. Now what is the point of this example? First of all if you look at your variable 1 which is equal to 5 it is defined inside of a namespace again and that is your global namespace which means that any kind of variable which you are defining inside of your program is available globally. So I can also go inside of my dummy function 1 and change the variable 1 to say something like 10. I can also go inside my nested function and change the variable to 20. So this is what is meant by a namespace which means that where does your variable stand or where does your function stand 
what are the elements which are accessible globally which are accessible locally these are the things which comes under namespaces and scopes so you can say that they are interrelated now the one thing which we have not yet talked about is uh, the built-in namespaces now what are built-in namespaces we have seen global namespace we have seen a local namespace what are then built-in namespaces so uh, let's just talk about the print function in python so the print function for you is available throughout your program be it any function be it any um, kind of a object which has a method so inside of it you can still write the print function wherever and whenever you want which means that those functions which are available for you irrespective of the program you write and irrespective of the uh, situations you are in you can still use them anytime anywhere so for example if you write a sorting function and you want to sort uh, a list of numbers with the help of the sort function inside of a custom function which you define from your end then still you can use the sort function inside of this uh, user defined function which means that the sort function is available for you in the built in namespace and that is a very clear sum up of what namespaces and scopes are now let's just look at an example on a real coding ground to see and make it more clear so this was just an example which i talked about all right so let's talk an about another example which uh, is here for example uh, we have written here a function which is f1 and it has a string which says welcome to rebox family so you can see that we have a function f1 which has a string and actually it's not a string it's a character array you can, which you can see if you come from a c language background then it is a character array which says welcome to a rebox family and then we have a defined function f2 which prints this string finally we are calling the f2 function inside of our uh, program and then we are calling the f1 function inside of our program so what is happening here is that we are calling those functions inside of a particular namespace so if you see the program closely since python follows a kind of an indentation here so we are calling the program f1 first and then we are calling the function f2 and inside of our function f2 we have the uh, print function which is printing the string s now to understand this better you can say that i want to just call the f2 function directly without even calling the f1 function so will that work yes definitely it will work but your program won't return you anything because the f2 function which you are going to call is defined inside of a local namespace and what is this namespace it is the f1 function still you see that the string s here is written inside of your f1 function and then we are calling the f2 function here and we have the print function inside of our f2 function but one thing which you can see here is that i could have called the print function anywhere inside of my program but i am calling it inside of the f2 function which means that it is getting called from the built in namespace and not the local namespace and uh, if we just talk about the string s we could have not even thought about calling it inside of our main function directly because that won't be possible since it is um, inside of our f1 function so we can not even access the string inside of our main function so that should make you uh, clear about what we are talking here about so uh, we talked about namespaces we talked about built in namespaces global namespace local namespace and let's now try to look at the examples which we have seen here so for example if we just talk about this example here as you can see that we are printing the variable one and the variable one is defined inside of your global namespace so just running the program will print the value five so as you can see the value five has been printed but what you cannot do here is that you cannot write print var2 because the variable 2 is not even inside of your global namespace so what you could have done is let's say we just call uh, this function and we want to print var2 now if i call this inside of my main function so we write dummy function 1 we just call it and we want to run this program so you can see that the value 5 has been printed which was the variable 1 and then the value 2 has been printed which is the variable 2 now this is possible because we have defined variable 2 inside of our dummy function 1 which means that it is inside of a local namespace which is the function itself and then we are calling the function and still we are able to use the print function which is inside of our built-in namespace to print the value var2 
and um, they should make you really clear about it that what what is the global namespace and what is the local namespace and what are built-in namespaces as well so let's just erase this program and just look at the commented code here which is the second example which we talked about so in this function what we are doing is we are calling the function f1 inside of which we have the function f2 defined and we are calling the function f2 so obviously without even calling a function the action which has been done is not going to be performed so if we just run this program now you can see that the output is welcome to the box family and this is possible because we have called the function f1 inside of which we have a function f2 and inside of which we have the uh, string s which has to be printed and this is how your namespaces are referred to and how the scope of each and every variable and function which you are trying to perform or execute helps you to build your program better so there's no point in making call to a function which is not even available globally and you are trying to figure out for hours that why my program is not working this is because you don't have an understanding about namespaces properly and that is how namespaces really helps you to just figure out what the things are and how the things are going on and how it is evaluating your program so it also helps you as a developer to just have a broad understanding of what your program is actually doing so i think that the concepts which i wanted to deliver are clear and if you still have a doubt we can talk about it on the telegram channel and as i have already mentioned in my previous videos you can go and subscribe to my telegram channels as well all the links are available in the description and once again i would like to request you if you have not subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe so that i can bring more videos like this to you and also we have our telegram channel where we can conduct the quizzes you can go and check out and try your luck on those quizzes as well and get to know how much you know about your computer fundamentals they are especially really a good start for the non-csit students so that they have a good grasp about it and the types of questions which we talk about on this channel are the questions which have been asked in previous question papers as well so that's why it's a all time benefit for you it's just a package of benefits which we are providing from our end and we just hope a subscribe from your part so that we get support to make those kind of videos for you and come back every week so thank you for watching this video and once again keep learning and keep programming